one more. Have you ever wondered about the best way to keep witches out of your barn? Early American farmers had a method that we can still see today on this historic red barn in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. It has several Pennsylvania Dutch hex signs on it, which is to ward out evil spirits and the witches, so they fly into the hex signs to think at the windows. They crash into the hex signs and step down to the windows. They think they're windows and to protect your animals. So obviously this is a really old barn. Any idea when it was built? We were told by the previous owners that the deed was written on land skin, signed by William Penn, and it's now at a local museum. It's old. Yes. <laughs> Lots older than me. A lot of people think barns store hay. I think they store history. As someone who has a family with Pennsylvania and German roots, um, being able to have our children and their grandchildren see the pride and joy of their ancestors. After all, the barn was their pride and joy. People would build a big barn before they would build a nice house. And because everything revolved around the barn, you stored your crops in the barn, you processed your grain in the barn, you stored your animals in the barn. Where I met an old, older Pennsylvania German gentleman told me one year when his wife needed new teeth and the barn needed a new roof, he decided to put a new roof on the barn saying she could gum it for another year, but if the barn roof went, the crops would be damaged. So tell us why this particular barn is the Pennsylvania style barn and, and even if we're in Maryland or some other state, it's still the Pennsylvania barn. The Pennsylvania barn is a barn that's a two level barn that has a bank on the rear side and on the front of it you have what's called a four bay, which is a recessed area for protection of the stable. Front of the barn, which opens up into the stables, faces south or southeast for solar gain. It allows the animals to get um, shade in the summer and it um, allows the warm sun to penetrate in the winter. On the north side, there's a bank of earth against the stable area, which helps keep the animals warm. It was a good idea and it worked, and that's why they were built this way for over a century. It spread in every direction because it was a good functional use of space. The lower part of a barn was for stabling of animals, and typically you would have cows in one side and horses in the other. You notice the doors are all different. You have doors here that have side lights. Those are usually people doors to walk through. You have a door with a transom, which would have been inside the stable. You can see it was a Dutch door because of the hinges. You have a wider door to get your equipment in and out. So each of these doors, when you look at it, served an individual function that you can tell what they were used for by the way they were designed. Why are these Dutch doors on the second floor? I mean, what purpose does that serve? They were actually called winnowing doors. You would open the bigger doors on the opposite side of the barn, which were the big wagon doors, and okay. through convection, that would cause a breeze or a draft. It makes it easier to separate the wheat from the chaff through the old-fashioned winnowing process. A couple of neat things you see from the gable end of the barn is first this big S. This is a bolt that's attached to a tie rod that goes through the entire barn. It helps keep the barn from swaying from side to side. And you would literally tighten that nut and the barn would come back to vertical. Now above here you see these holes. Those are decorative, but more importantly, there was a for ventilation. Uh, the hay mows are on the other side so you don't get spontaneous combustion and burning. They're designed by leaving bricks out of the wall so that it ventilates. Uh, and it's the hallmark of, of the brick barns in Pennsylvania are these decorative brick gable end ventilators. The term in Pennsylvania German uses just for pretty. That's why they were often done. All right, here we go. Remember when we were on the outside of the barn, I said one side was the horse side, one side was the cow side. This is the clue that tells us which side is the horse side. What do you think this was used for? Ropes. Close, it was actually used to hang harness. And that's how we know the horse side from the cow side. And if you look in the corner, there's a little niche in there, which was used for storing curry combs and other horse related objects. So Jeff, walking through the barn, we can almost like feel and you know, the, the presence of the animals that live there. It is for me, and maybe I thought I was a little bit unusual in that. You can, you can almost feel the spirit of the animals, even if they're not there. So Jeff, is this wall right here what constitutes the bank barn? It, great. This is the wall that is on the bank. Remember, the bank is designed to get to the second floor. Mm -hmm. So there's a earth on the other side of this wall, and then the wagons would come up the bank embankment. The actual bank where you came up to get on the second floor, you can actually see over here where it projects out. And that's to keep the hydrostatic pressure of all that earth from pushing the wall in. So these guys knew what they were doing when they built these barns. 
Now we'll go around and I'll show you what the bank looks like from the outside of the barn. The hill we're going up is called the bank or the barn hill. And the stonework, the buttress we saw downstairs, is actually designed to keep all the weight of this earth from pushing the inside the wall, pushing the wall in. So it was all engineered to keep the, all this mass of earth from damaging the below ground portion of the stone work of the barn. Barns were remarkably well built. And this barn looks to be about the 1850s or 60s. So it's been a well over a century. The important technological changes in that period was the invention of the hay trolley. Before that period, no, made no sense to build a barn any taller than you could throw the hay from the back of your hay wagon into the hay mouse. About the time of the Civil War, a system was designed so that you could bring your hay wagon in, a hook would come down, grapple the hay, and then through a series of ropes and pulleys, you pull your horses back out, the hay goes up, and you have a tripwire that releases it. So with the construction of the hay trolley, you can build a barn as tall as you wanted. It actually has this labor-saving device that you could drop the hay and whatever you wanted down to the animals. One of the most interesting features in Pennsylvania and German barns is located way at the peak called a Schwollenwalk. A uh, what? A swallow hole. And it's a decorative cutout. The idea was to allow swallows to come in to eat insects as a Maltese cross. A piece of it's been broken out over the years. But that's one of the features you see on Pennsylvania German barns and one of the cute little features that, and just for pretty. Jeff, I have a door over here. I have a question to ask you about it. It has a bunch of writing on it and different dates. What can you tell me about that? This appears to be like George Starr, double A, German spelling. And then here's the date of 1890 and 1891. So during that period of time, when they were supposedly working, they were just taking a few minutes to uh, autograph the barn. The ones I think are more interesting are the ones that are up here which are what we refer to as tally mark. Behind this door was the granary. Somebody either was moving things in or moving things out and they wanted to keep a tally. Right, because it goes all the way down the door. Well, they, for hundreds of years, they used this as a place to take notes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, over the generations, you can see there was a lot more here, which the sun has faded. Another, who knows, five or 10 years, there'll be no evidence of the stars passing in their life in the barn. So why is it important that we save our barns? I think we owe it as a way to pay homage to the people who spent the tremendous amount of effort to build these barns. More importantly, to give something for our future generations to understand where they came from, where their ancestors came from, and how they lived the way they lived. Barns take on a sense of character that only comes with age. Some of the barn settles, some of the barn fades, some of the pieces maybe separate, and collectively, it makes a picture that is just remarkable. Like walking in a combination of a tall ship and a cathedral. It's just an amazing feeling with the shaded light coming through, and it's just, to me, a special place. Like home. Like home. A little dustier, but like home. <laughs>